Okay guys, first step of the patch involves the little thin grinder blade. Cut that weld and get that other patch off. Okay guys, so that is our New Holland engineering and you can see why I put that strap over the top of it last time. This piece right here is what holds the curtain. I think this time we're going to use thicker, 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 thicker strap material. So you can't use very thick a strap material or when the curtain folds over it hits there. And so I think this time I'm going to cut out that little square there and that will allow me to use a thicker material in my strap and then just butt weld this to that strap but eliminate see how the holder goes all the way across the top of the bar well the bar is not strong enough to carry the damn curtain and so that's plan a put a bigger strap cut through this and then on the back i want to show you their gusset so this material right here is the gusset and see how it comes out onto the arm there well that is my problem with new holland right there if they just would have filled in this piece of steel all the way across look at that little finger of a gusset it's a joke if they just would have taken this piece of steel and laid it all the way out to this point here They wouldn't have had that problem, but they didn't do it. And when I expose that there and show you how thin this piece of tubular stock is, you'll, you'll, you will be amazed, but that's the plan. I think we're going to have to put a gusset on the back here as well. Some kind of little strip plate that will tie our plate into that and try and take the place of that joke of a little guess that they have on there right now. So, let's start grinding. Okay guys, hour and a half later. Half an hour of digging through the iron pile. So the piece of uh, two inch wide flat stock that is uh, three sixteenths thick doesn't exist in our iron pile. And of course, it's about 40 miles to a place where I can buy iron. So we dug through the salvage pile and this is the best that we could come up with. Unfortunately, it's two and a quarter and it's, what is that? That must be three eighths. It's thick steel, it's way overkill. But it's the only dang thing we can find in the iron pile. And for our back gusset, we found that piece of stock that we will be able to put in there and so a bunch of more grinding and welding because we don't have the proper size of stock but there you can see the break and you can see my prep I think it's getting close to being ready uh, first thing we've got to do is we beat out the original break and so we're gonna get some 7018 and we're gonna burn into that as hard as we can so I couldn't do that the first time because I had that piece of metal on the top there I couldn't even approach the crack but now I've got the crack exposed and I've got it beat out and so we will at least be able to put uh, weld onto the original piece of tubular so fun 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 we're gonna work again for a while and so since I don't have the right material or a plasma cutter we get to do it the old-fashioned way boys making a piece of two inch flat iron out of 3 8 stock well it ought to be strong enough 
So we had the we had it all rigged up and ready to weld. And we stretch out the welder cord and we don't have enough welder cord. And we've blocked in the shop so that we can't get the loader. So we had to move the tools and rejig it. But I think we're ready to do the initial uh, deep penetration weld on the beam itself. Ah, uh, fun, fun, fun. Uh, just because I can mechanic doesn't mean that I like to. Uh, if I wanted to be a mechanic, I would have been a mechanic. Uh, but uh, I want to farm, so I farm. And that's why when I have to work on machines sometimes like this, uh, it's irritating. But enough grabbing. Time to start welding. Okay, guys. So we have come by with our first hot bead. And we have filled the crack. And yeah, that's not to full strength, so now it's time to work on the gussets. So just to reiterate, I could not access that crack the first time because I didn't go ahead and cut off that top strap. But with that top strap out of the way, I was able to get good penetration on three sides of that. The bottom had not broken yet. And neither of the bottom corners, well, there might be a little bit of distress in that bottom corner, but uh, they hadn't broken through yet. So now time to grind down those welds and prepare some gussets. Okay, so there's phase one of the gusset. Don't laugh at me, guys. That is the only material that I could find that was close to it. Yes, it's oh twice as thick as it needs to be but when you don't run to the iron pile or to the iron dealer to get stock this is what you're left with but uh probably won't break there again okay so phase one is done we got this back support here welded up all the way around and we've got our oversized support on. I welded inside there. And then we'll put the plate on top of that and weld that. So next time it breaks, it's going to be a big repair. Knock on wood. Oh, did I mention that I just hate welding upside down? Kind of a little bit ugly, but for 70, 70 18 and a stick. It's serviceable. So, on to part two. Get that top plate on. Okay, so we have put the top strap on and we've cleaned it and it's ready for paint. Uh, from this perspective, it looks pretty good. From that perspective, you can see how obscenely oversized that metal is, but maybe that'll help it hold together. Now, probably what it'll do is make it break right here next time, but it uh, is finally back together, and it's relatively solid for now. So let's get some paint on it while the steel is still hot and helps it dry out fast. So five hours later, it's done. The paint is on, and. Uh, we're back together. Okay, so it's the next morning. Uh, the hood is back on and the disc mower is ready to go again. Uh, final thoughts, guys. Uh, I don't mean to dog on equipment manufacturers. I understand that all machines have uh, flaws, if you will. Uh, Usually, though, you know, when you make as many machines as New Holland did of this disc mower, uh, you have plenty of time to work out the bugs through all the different series and, uh, you know, address your quality control and your design issues. And uh, it appears to me today that that, uh, that step of the manufacturing process is not as good as it used to be. Uh, you know, design flaws or design weaknesses should be worked out 
as part of the manufacturing process and things continually get updated. But uh, if you're a modern machine manufacturer, uh, like on the mainframe there, and uh, you've got welds breaking on your machine, that's just, that's not, that's not the way modern machine manufacturers should be. So anyway, the good news is, is my big oversized gusset there does not interfere with the folding of the hood. And so that is still working. Uh, it does pinch, does did pinch and crease the hood there a little bit or the curtain or whatever you want to call it because it is a tight fit now. Uh, but it appears to be back together and we'll go run it again. Uh, you know, I knew when I bought this machine, you know, I was buying it as is. There's another picture of the welds that I had to do on the mainframe. The mainframe had cracked right there. You can see one of the welds. Uh, but, you know, the question becomes whether the machine should have been sold or whether it should have gone back to the manufacturer. Uh, I don't know that the weakness in those welds reflect the weakness in the original break in this in the curtain arm, but uh, it's just not good business to allow that to happen because then we wind up where I'm at today where I had a machine that I was trying to work with and it broke. So, thanks for watching guys. This, in, this video, is, instead of, you know, dogging on New Holland, really ought to be a video about overall manufacturer and uh, uh, things for other people who operate a motor like this to be aware of. So, thanks for watching guys. Thanks for your support.